Yes, y'all. When I tell y'all I am super lit, um, kind of just echo what my husband talked about when we first jumped on. Like community night, engage night is a whole thing. Like I think it is best and it is our favorite um day of the week for a lot of reasons. But one of those reasons is because we get to know y'all better. Like we got to see Miss Vera doing hair. We get to see who work out. We get to see what y'all like to eat. We get to see who can't stay up doing messages. Y'all be falling asleep. It's just like all this amazing stuff. We get to see who like live in the back of the church, who like to be on blast and write a whole bunch of stuff. It's just all this cool stuff. But I think, um, and y'all, let me tell y'all this other thing. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I have always been this avid person about like, I'm not a coffee drinker. Pastor Travis gave me some coffee this morning because I was drowsy for some Benadryl and I feel great. Like, I don't know, it's been this whole new thing on me today. Like, I was like, I might have to become a coffee drinker because like, I am feeling it today. Like, I am super duper excited, but kind of back to my whole story for tonight. Like, community night is dope because we get exposed to all of y'all, but not only that, we get a word of inspiration and then we get to break out in small groups. And for anybody that knows me, you know that I love opportunities for people to have their voice heard, to be accountable, to be loved on. And that's what community night is all about. And so if you're not in a city group, if you're not um, just engaging in what we have going on to just continue to grow, like, please, please, please join a city group. It is not too late. We would love for you to continue to grow. But the best part to me about Engage Night is that Pastor Travis and I get to kind of like kick back and be foolish. Like we are so silly. And I think that you all get exposed to a side of us that you would not get to without nights like this. And so I'm like super excited about that. And I think... Um, one of the things that's just been super big on my heart, I think if you just kind of looked at Pastor Tra Travis and I at face value or even just some of the silly stuff that we've said on stage, you know how they say that adage, like don't judge a book by its cover, that you can sometimes start to feel like, oh yeah, like I know everything about them or they're just this one version or this, they're just this one way. But all of us have said that like you can't judge a book by its cover, but we all have been guilty of that. Like anybody in the room, like, you know, you see a person for one the first time or maybe the first few times and you know, like just based on the way they dress, or um, how they respond to a situation, you start feeling like, oh yeah, I know everything about them. I know what's going on. And I don't think, and I, I say this a lot, it, there is anything worse in life than somebody feeling like they know you and you know they don't know, know you. Like you ever been there like, they telling you like they done heard about you or they done watched your family on social media and they automatically start to assume like, oh yeah, I know everything there is to know about a person. And the truth is, is that's so far from the truth. And I had a girl that I've only seen two times in person the other day, love her deeply. She's absolutely amazing. She told me like, for real, for real girl, like in my head, we're best friends. Like I know everything about you. And I was like, hmm, that's great. I love her now. Like, no, not against her at all. I absolutely love her, love her family, will show up for her. But the reality and this understanding of knowing like, it takes experience, it takes time of being around a person to really get to know a person in full Like I would always tell people, don't just read my first chapter, read my whole story to, to truly get a true appreciation for who I am. And I think that's true for absolutely everybody on here. Like, there is no way to fully understand the full essence of a person without slowing down and getting to know um, them. And so tonight, I really kind of wanted to just take a moment. Um, if y'all don't mind, I want to kind of reveal one little fun fact about myself. And I'm not going to let PT speak. He better not come off mute um, because he would define this part of me a little bit different than me. And he has a couple of times. There have been a couple of times he tried to speak for me on this subject. He would say it like this, that I used to be a nerd. I like to say that I love to learn. Like, I love it. I love to learn. Anybody that knows me or been close to me and actually have been able to walk with me, like, Pastor Jackie loves to learn. And if me and PT got to meet in the middle ground, I would have to say that I'm a cool nerd. Like, I got to add a little swag to being nerdy. You know, like, I love it. I love to teach people different stuff. I love all of this. And I know maybe some of my four women or even some of my permission tribe, you might be looking like, PJ, like, girl, you have your face beat and you like the dress and all of this stuff. There is no way you're a nerd or was a nerd. And the truth is like underneath loving Jesus, underneath being a bad girl and seeing women transform, I love all things learning. Like I love to know how things work. I love all of this. I majored in biology. First of all, I studied parasites, all this stuff, like just from judging me from the, from the you know outward appearance, there was no way that you would know that I used to write love letters to God about parasitology, which is a study of parasites. Like when I tell you like the girl did academia, like not halfway, like all the way in there, love it. I love to know how things work, which is why I studied biology and 
it was this thing about academia where I went through my undergrad where I only made one B. I made it in general chemistry and I lost my mind. Like, no, you don't believe it. Pastor Travis can speak up a little bit. Like, y'all, I used to lose it, cry. I mean, have a whole fit if I miss one question on a test. Just all this stuff just was foolish. And you might just be like, man, PJ is just like all hype on herself, telling us all this amazing stuff about herself. But before we go too far into that narrative, the reality that I wanted to share with y'all tonight is that God stepped into a strong place in my life. Like in this area of learning and loving to learn, he stepped in. And when I tell y'all, he exposed in the worst way, this need that I had for perfection and knowing it all. I had to have all the right answers and everything had to be perfect. I had to cross every T and dot every I. Do I have any a recovering perfectionist, or maybe some people that are still dealing with perfection on the call tonight. If so, drop it in the chat. Anybody with me on this whole, like I was in the AA program, I'm a perfectionist and I had to be delivered from this need to have control and get it all right and cross every T and dot every I. Like God was just, it's funny. Like I felt like an undergrad, like I got my summa cum laude, I got my three, nine, six and I was killing it. I was feeling great. And I got to dental school and this strong area of loving to learn, God stepped in and he was just like, yeah, I know this area. You used to feel like you were a master. You had control and you were doing this all well. Well, I'm about to show you that this need for perfection cannot coexist with the need for me. And I want somebody to really take that in. I think that there's so many areas in all of our life. Maybe your thing was in academia, but you know how to sing and you know how to hit them runs and you know how to make the church go up. You know, like this is my thing or you are a people person and you're like all out there and everybody like you're the life of the party and you just come alive and doing this thing. Or maybe you bury yourself in work working and have you ever stopped to question what's the motive behind why you do this thing that you love to do so much and for me as God was starting to kind of like unveil and uncover this journey of me walking life out with him he started uncovering this perfectionism and this need of having all the right answer what he showed me though was that both of these things this need to, to be right and have it all right was destroying my ability to move forward and go forward into the things of god with god i felt like you know like having it all right was what you're supposed to do you know god and i used to quote scripture you know how we do it. and i don't know if i got some over church in the building like i used to tell god like no god you said i'm the head and not the tail i would come i come behind and no good thing so surely i'm supposed to be the top of the class i'm supposed to be excellent i got to do all this stuff and god was like yes sweetie i did say all that but how you do all that is a big piece that you're missing. Like the armor of flesh is not supposed to be your strong place. And so I want to read for y'all something that God showed me in the Bible tonight as he was kind of uncovering this need to have all the right answers and all of this stuff. He told me in 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2 and 3, it says in verse 2, the one who thinks that he knows something does not yet know as he ought to know. But the one who loves God is known by God. I want to say this one more time. It says the one who thinks he knows something does not yet know as he ought to know. So we think we've got all the answers and we need all like we got to know like, God, I need to know where we go. I'm going. I need to know the direction we're going in. And he says that you don't know anything if that you're, you're trying to know that. But if the but if you are one that loves God then you are known by God. And in the NLT, it says it a little different a verse two. It says anyone who claims to know all the answers doesn't really know very much. And I just felt like that I had to come into agreement with something God woke me up this morning screaming. He told me to remind his children that he knows. And because he knows, we don't have to know it all. I don't know if somebody else on here might have needed this reassurance. The, the scripture reference was 1 Corinthians 8, 2, and 3 for those that were asking in the chat. Like this reality that God knows, it should, it should bring about so much peace, so much joy, so much rest. And this understanding that he knows every hair in your head before you live one day, before any one of your days come to be, he know who you're going to marry. He know who you married to and how to perfect that situation. He knows about every one of your children. He knows, like, it's such a simple but profound truth that he knows. And because he knows, you don't have to know. Like, this understanding of God knowing is one of those things that, 
you get to choose to give up the right of knowing it all and surrendering to the fact that the one who loves us knows it all. It allows us to come into this place of like just resting easier or this ability to release control or becoming a greater version of ourselves. And that's the option we have. But I also make clear that it is an option. You have to be willing to give over the right to know it all and surrender to God knowing it all to find yourself being led by green pastures and beside still waters. Like we have to choose to give up lies that we might have been telling ourselves for a long time because if I speak for my own life, there was a time where I felt like in my life personally, if I didn't have all the right answers, then if I didn't know where I was going, if I didn't know my purpose, cause you know, like, oh, you gotta get the purpose driven life. If you are if you are a Bible scholar, like you gotta know your purpose. You gotta know where you're going. You gotta know what God is doing on your behalf and who you're becoming. You gotta know the direction of life. And if you don't know all these things, then if I don't know, then don't nobody know. And that is such a scary thought for so many people. Like I got anybody on here that's just like, God, I can't release control because like, if I give up on it, like, doesn't that make my future unsure? Like, how could I ever get to the place that you want me to get to if I don't know exactly where I'm going in? It's this, like, I believe for so long, like, there, there is not a possibility of me getting to this great place or this great version of myself um, that so many people spoke about, like, Pastor Jack, I see all this potential, and many people on this call tonight have been struggling in that war of giving up and making this exchange for knowing it all, for getting to know the one that knows it all, because we feel like if we give up, we lose control somehow, and somehow our life is going to end up in this horrible version of what we believe in. I I wanted to just share with y'all tonight this one thing that God told me about if we're willing to make this exchange, if we give up this, this quest or this pursuit of getting all the right answers on our own and our own strength and our own efforts, like we got to get the right job with the right amount of money, with the right relationship and all this stuff in order to have this false security with the best attempts of knowing it all, all we're going to come to is knowing, uh, you know, we'll get this false security where we start kind of being shaken up by the winds and waves of life. But I'll tell you something that God says in the word that if we exchange our willingness to know everything and having all the right answers for knowing him what he does the bible says this in psalms 1 it says something so profound and it's my mama's favorite scripture i want to read the first three verses it says oh the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around sinners or join in with mockers like there's this group of people that are following behind people with their best attempts and their best advice of like, they're following the ways of the world and the way the world say you gotta do stuff. And you know, just all these different things. But he compares this to verse two and he says, but they delight these other people that delight in the law of the Lord and made it meditate on his word day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbanks, bearing fruit in each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. What I recognized in my own life is there were many times that I wanted to prosper in all I did, but I did not want to make the choice first to delight in him. I did not want to make the choice of giving up the right to try to delight in my own, having it all together. Oh, they know I know every scripture. They know I got it all together. I did not want to give up the right to being able to navigate my own car to where I thought was the best version of my life. I wanted to have it all in control. And he says that those that want to prosper in all you do in, in the season of, of planning for a city, in the season of having a new baby, in the season of entering marriage, in the season of new relationships, you can prosper in all of that if you first choose to delight in me. And he closes this passage in verse six by saying, for, for the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. He says that he watches over it. And I told y'all, even in the beginning, that the only way to really know a person is you have to get to know them by watching their ways and watching over them. And what I wanted to highlight for you is that God knows he watches over our life. Like in every one of our details, he's there, he's present. Like he doesn't just sit in heaven watching us from afar. Like, oh, look at them down there. Like, oh, they just making a mess of their life. He knows he gets down in every detail. He says he delights in every one of our details. He perceives our thoughts from afar. He says that he perfects the 
very things that concern us. And so I don't want you to miss that. There is a God in heaven that knows. He knows about that doctor's diagnosis that you got. He knows about the current anxiety and depression you have. He knows about the marital issues that you have. He knows, he knows, he knows. He's watching over the path of the godly, those that have made the decision to give up the right of knowing it all and delighting in him. He knows. He's watching. He's watching. And I think the beautiful thing in the story that I gave is that he didn't take away this gift that he gave me to love to learn. He exchanged it for this understanding that learning to love him was the greatest study. I didn't have to give up loving to learn. I didn't have to give up this quest for learning more knowledge, but I had to decide that the greater study was getting to know God and loving him and loving his ways and meditating on what he said about my life, that he said that I was ahead and not to tell, that he said that my salvation was a gift and that I didn't have to work or earn it. And those truths that I could delight in him or that he perceives my thoughts from afar, that he said that um, I could... Um, lean on him, that I I could acknowledge him in all my ways and that he would direct my path. Learning to delight in that and giving my way and giving study to that, learning what it felt like when Jesus walked in a room was way more impactful than me knowing the answers to every little thing. And the truth is, he didn't just say that he was a greater study. He said that he was the answer to every one of my questions. He's not just the greatest study. He's the answer to all our issues. If you want to know what your purpose is, it's founded in him. If you want to know who's going to fix the marital issues, it's founded in him. If you want to know who's Jehovah Rapha that will heal that that diagnosis, it's still him. He's all seeing. He's all knowing. He's everything that we need and some. He's more than enough and he's everything we need. All I had to know was the one who knew. Do you hear me? We don't have to know everything. We just have to recognize that we know the one who knows. And as a result of that, we shift from having this false reality of security and value in ourselves to having true security and this unshakable faith, this confidence in the one that knows. It's this reality of living every season where we're delighted in learning to love God and knowing that he will shift our life to know that in every season that we will bear fruit because he'll be able to bear it through us because he's the one that knows how. The Bible talks about in John 15, if we abide in him and he abides in us, that he will be able to bear fruit and not just fruit, much fruit and fruit that'll last. And I'll just tell y'all that this reality, this truth of giving up this pursuit to know it all on my own and have it all together. But when I recognize that he knew He knew how to wipe the tears that I was crying because I was trying to hold the weight of my world. I was trying to get it all perfect. And that I knew that there was a God that before I get to any day on his divine calendar is there. Before I met the love of my life, Pastor Travis, he knew him. He fashioned and formed him for specifically for us to walk together. And it's so true for many of us. My prayer tonight is that for anybody that's struggling with this perfectionism, struggling with this desire of wanting to hold control, that you give up on you. Giving up on you is the beginning to walking into a life of freedom. And I got a guy, a, a spiritual baby that loves to say this, like, welcome to freedom. It feels good over here. That truth of understanding that God knows shifted my, my life in a way that permission room, permission world, permission was birthed because I understood that I could return back to the God created version of myself. And that version of me was just a daughter that was sit at the feet of Jesus, Jesus and learn of him and knowing him meant that I knew everything that I needed to know because he'd be the answer to every one of my issues. And I pray that that truth tonight would shift the person that is anxious, that is afraid to know like, you can put your trust in him. He didn't give you the spirit of fear, but a power, love and a sound mind. And your mind is sound when you know that he knows. That's really all I got, ladies and gentlemen. I pray that um, this word would help somebody, that it would settle the heart of somebody that might be afraid, that you no longer fear trusting him, that you know he knows.